Hi, welcome to this Cubase Guru video on synth creation. We're going to use a synthesizer called Zebra 2. Um, there's several reasons why I chose this synth, primarily because of its ease of use and its practicality and the fact that it's modular. However, it's what you would call a wireless modular synth. Now, if you don't really know what I mean by that, wait till you watch the next video, which is building a synth in Reactor. And then you'll see that in Reactor, you actually have to join the wires from each module to the other module. Again, they're both modular synthesizers. However, we could call this one a wireless modular. Now, what we've got here is an overview of the Zebra synth. This middle section is where you add your modules. You've got four audio paths. At the moment, we are just concerned with one. We'll be using this one here. You add your modules here, the audio path comes down here and comes through these settings here, then comes into the main output here. So this is your overall output. You've got a volume here as well for this audio path. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail, I'm just going to create a basic synth at the moment. The detail will get deeper and more complex as we go on. So, in this section here, we want to create a sound source first. Obviously, without a sound source, we can't make any sound. And in this case, we're going to use a simple oscillator as our sound source. So to get our sound sources up, go to one of the boxes, preferably the top one, left click and select oscillator one. Now, as you can see, there's many other modules in there, but at the moment we're concerned with oscillator one and that's it. As you can see, it's created the oscillator here on the left hand side, but it's also created an LFO slash vibrato on the other side. We're not concerned with this at the moment because we won't be using it. But all you need to know is this sound, this side is pretty much your sound sources. Things like filters and stuff will be in here. And you'll see that your envelopes and LFOs, your, your sound controllers and modulators will be on this side. So we have oscillator one now. As you can see, it's red. Double click it. You turn it off. Double click it again. You turn it back on. We then have a blue line. That blue line indicates the audio path, as I previously explained. Now, if we go to the oscillator itself, we can have a look and see what we've got here. We'll start up here at the left-hand side. Now, as you can see, there's nothing assigned here, apart from you can see these three little dots. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. What these are is modulation sources. By that, I mean you can add anything to this button to control a parameter. Now, this is the kind of stuff that I explained in the very basic, the very first basic videos. So by this time, you should understand what I mean by a modulator or a modulation source. So for instance, this modulator parameter will modulate this wave parameter here. Now to do that, you left click and then you can select any one of these to use to modulate this section. I'm not going to go any, any deeper into that at the moment. We don't need to be doing any of this at this moment in time. Next you've got tuning, so it's your semitones, you can minus 48 to plus 48. Now to get that back to its original place, just double click the button, there you go. Then you've got another modulator, then you've got detune for detuning your oscillator. You've got a vibrato setting here, which is tied to this over here. Then you've got a pan, left and right. Another modulator, volume of the oscillator. Another modulator then here, we've got a width control. So if you're using stereo, you would use that to increase your stereo width. In this instance, we're just going to drop that because we're using mainly monophonic to start with. And in here where it says single, if you click there, you can choose single oscillator, dual, which you can then detune. Quad or four, eleven. Again, just be aware that they're there. It's not something we're going to touch at the moment. Now, up here, you can see four sections: default, mix, FX, and phase. If we come to, sorry, I shouldn't have done that. That just closes this little bottom section up. Then you go back to mix. So we're in the mix section at the moment which is the starting section. If you come in here to effects, you can then add two different effects to the oscillator. All kinds of stuff in there. Explore them 
on your own. But again, I'm not going to go into these at the moment. They have value settings and again, another modulator. And you have a phase. So you can um, mess around with the phase of the oscillators, get them triggering or out of phase with each other, so on and so forth. Again, not something we're going to look at at the moment. Got key scaling and stuff in here as well, which will all be explained when we get deeper into the tutorials. Now, the main one that we're interested in at the moment is this default button. If we click on the default, it brings this up and it gives us the factory oscillators. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to use the bright saw. So, you can hear it's very bright. Okay, back to mix. Get rid of the width. You can turn the volume right up if you like. Again, the volume can, can be controlled there, there, and there. So it's up to you. Now, what we now want to add into the audio path is a filter. So again, if you left click there, VCF for voltage control filter. Voltage control stems back from the old analog days when they used voltages to deal with things like pitch. So you can you can research that if you like. We will get into some of that stuff later on. So we've now got the filter. Again, we've got sources and modulation parameters here where you can add your modulation device and they're directly related to the sources that they're next to. You can change the filter type. So low pass, band pass, high pass, a couple of EQ shelving stuff there, band reject. I'll stick it on low pass vintage two. Okay, so we've got a very basic synth at the moment. We want to add another couple of things. What we want for the purpose of the video tutorials to come, we need an envelope to control the cutoff of the filter. So again, all we do is come to the modulation sources here. We have two. Now we want the envelope to control the cutoff. So if we left click on that, it's envelope one. As you can see, envelope one has appeared over here. This envelope will now control the cutoff frequency of the filter with this parameter here. So if we do this, nothing happens, but if we turn the envelope up, and maybe let's just reduce the cutoff a section. So there we go, turn the envelope, modulator up. The settings on the envelope up here are now controlling the cutoff. Again, we'll get into that when we make the sounds. So we now pretty much have everything we need apart from one final tool, which is we need another envelope to control the amplitude or the amp. So it will be known as the amp envelope. With regards to the amp envelope, what we need to do is add it in down here. Now, if we add it in here where it says gate, it automatically means that it controls the volume. That's the relationship between these in this synth makeup. So if we click on gate, go to envelope 2, because we've already got envelope 1, you'll see envelope 2 has popped up here. So the envelope number 2 now controls the amplitude or the overall volume of the sounds. Okay, so as you can see, these parameters at this moment are controlling the overall amplitude of the sound. Okay, and that's our basic synth belt. So just to recap, we have an oscillator, which is our sound source. We have a filter to shape the tone of the sound source in this case. We use envelope 1 to control the cutoff frequency of the filter because we've added envelope 1 here to the cutoffs modulator. We have added a second envelope to control the amplitude or the overall volume of the patch by adding the envelope here. And the LF01 vibrato is being added automatically when you add the synth. So that's it. That's the basic synthesizer that we're going to need for the following videos. So take your time, follow it properly, get the right parameters on there. And then once you've done it, what you can do is zero everything, apart from the sustain and the amplitude envelope, so that you can still hear something. And then if you come up to here and click save, 
call it whatever you like, put your name in there, you can put a description in there if you like, and then just hit OK, and you'll save it. And then to find that, you come into Presets, and depending on where you've saved it, hopefully it'll be in local, which it probably will. You'll see it here, double click on it, and it's there. As you can see, there's the My Empty Synth again. If I click on CG1 blank, there's the basic synth. Okay, I hope this video's helped you out and give you some understanding of Zebra. And I'll see you in the next video.